Mike Clifford here, and I'm going to show you how I designed and created this cantilevered live edge table with a concrete through table post. Now, there were a couple design challenges here because of the way that I wanted to create the angled post. I was using a standard concrete forming tube that you could buy at any box store. And so to get it cut at the angle, I had to slice it at the top and at the bottom perfectly parallel to one another. Second, when I created the form and attached the tube that was now sliced at an angle to the wood top, I had to make sure that the concrete top and the wood table were lined up perfectly parallel to one another so that the table would sit flat on the floor and would be parallel to the ground. I'm going to show you how I overcame those design challenges and ended up with what I think is a pretty cool looking table uh, so that you can go and hopefully the process will be much easier for you if you decide to do it or even better if you get inspired and make something different that is derived from this. I'd love to see it. I knew that I wanted to use a standard concrete form tube with 12 inches di diameter that you could get at any big box store. The challenge, however, was to figure out how to cut it at 15 degrees consistently. The solution I came up with was to make my own large miter box to fit the tube. I used scrap plywood that I had lying around the shop and pocket hole joinery to create the miter box. I put the tube in the form and marked a spot and then marked a line through the tube to the other end. This was to allow me to line the tube up at the exact same angle in the miter box each time so that the top and bottom of the form would be cut parallel to each other. I, I tried a lot of different saws and ended up using a Japanese saw here to do most of the work. Uh, but I needed one that was larger than 12 inches so that I could cut the top section. I found a random saw for cutting tree branches. It didn't work too well, but it was enough to score the line uh, across the top and make sure that I got a 15 degree angle. If anyone has any better ideas for this, I'd be uh, happy to hear them as far as an inexpensive saw that would work for them. Next, I set up my router planing jig and if you uh, have never used one of these just do a google search there's tons of tutorials about how to flatten a piece of wood with a router uh, they're really easy to make you can make it in about 30 minutes it's not too difficult so i put this live edge maple slab which is a little less than three inches thick and uh, again i picked up on ebay i've been really surprised at the nice pieces of wood you can find there for a reasonable price uh, i put that in and i first leveled the bottom uh, then after I leveled the bottom and had a flat surface there, I flipped it over and repeated this process to level out the top. Now, this next step is probably not necessary, but I decided that I wanted to use some epoxy to fill in some of the larger holes in the piece of wood. I used some painter's tape there to cover the holes in the bottom so that the epoxy wouldn't spill everywhere, mixed up the two-part epoxy and applied it to the holes. Again, if you're interested in this, there's tons of uh, tutorials out there about how to apply epoxy to a slab that you can watch to, to learn how to do this. I'm not going to go through the whole process right now. It's fairly simple. I made one more pass with my router to remove the excess epoxy and then I moved to the sanding. Now after you use the router there's going to be some visible lines in the wood and you're going to want to use your belt sander to remove those first. Next, I used my palm sander and went up the grits to about 240 grit uh, to smooth out the top surface. I'd like to take a moment right now to remind you, if you like my build videos, please click that subscribe button down in the lower right so you can get notified about all my future builds. Back to the project, I had to cut a hole to pour the concrete through. Since the hole didn't have to be that clean and it was three inches thick, I used my reciprocating saw. I then took a break from the woodworking to cut out some 10 inch by 10 inch foam squares that I would insert into the concrete form to reduce its weight. We'll come back to these later. Now it was time to finish the rest of the form. I used a piece of an acrylic for the base that would create the top of the table because Pouring concrete against acrylic can give you a really smooth surface and I wanted the 
surface to appear almost a glass-like on the top uh, so that the post would appear almost as if it was a Romanesque column uh, that had been polished on top but had imperfections on its side uh, to create a marble-like effect. Now, for this lower part of the form that would form the upper part of the post on top of the tabletop, I used the silicone caulk technique that I described in my last video. So if you want a few more details on that, go back and, and check out that last video and you'll see uh, that process in more detail. I forgot to record one small step here, and that was cutting a support for the top section of the form. Uh, I just cut a scrap piece of 2x4 at 30 degrees and 45 degrees uh, so that it would sit and support the uh, 15 degree post. I then used a hot glue gun to attach the 2x4 to the post and set it up uh, to mock up the form and make sure everything was level before I attached it. I then marked matching lines on the top of the form and the underside of the table so that I could quickly line up the form with the table, uh, which was important because the top part here is going to be attached with hot glue during the middle of the pour. So before I poured, I went and I used hot glue to attach the bottom part of the form or the top part of the table uh, to the wood slab. Then it was time to mix up some concrete. As I noted last time, I, I plan to do a video on GFRC uh, that will explain this process on its own in more detail. But for now, I will mention that I, I did a slightly different process than in my last video where I sprayed on the face coat. This time, I just mixed up a thin face coat, which was a sand Portland cement uh, polymer and plasticizer mix and put it by hand into the form through the hole in the table. You can see here I'm using my hand to really try to spread it around. I'm really just putting a thin coat of it on uh, to try and spread it around and get a perfectly glassy tabletop that will pop out. I then went back and added glass fibers to the remainder of the mix which will give it a lot more strength. I placed this backer mix with the glass fibers in by hand and filled the uh, underside of the table, which was again forming the circular part of the tube on top of the table. Uh, I filled that up to the top of the hole uh, before it was time to attach the top of the tube. And this all has to be done really quick. It was a little nerve wracking. You, you probably want to do some test runs. Uh, before you mix just to make sure everything is in place and ready to go and you haven't forgot anything because once you're going if you have something wrong you, you can't stop so I used hot glue I attached it and then I, I went back uh, with the remainder of the backer glass fiber mix and uh, placed it by hand I also put in as you see here uh, four of those pink foam 10 by 10 sheets uh, each of those is going to reduce your weight by about uh, 10 to 12 pounds, so it's really nice to have those. I will also mention that the foam inserts were placed in the middle of the post. I wanted there to be a lot of weight towards the bottom and towards the top so that it really helped balance out the cantilever and the table was stable. While we're waiting for the concrete to dry, I, I've shown here what you can do with leftover concrete. And I've got some fun videos, I think, coming up, some quick, quick, short videos that I'm going to release about s small projects you can do with leftover concrete. So after it dried for 48 hours, because this is a thicker piece of concrete, I removed the form and used uh, some diamond sanding pads to sand down the edges at the bottom so that it wouldn't scratch up my floors. I went up to 200 grit on those diamond sanding pads because I, I really wanted to avoid scratching. I then used some painter's tape to mask off the concrete so that the stain uh, that I was applying to the wood would not uh, penetrate and darken the concrete. After I flipped it over, it had the glassy smooth top that I wanted. Awesome. I went, then went around um, removing the top section of the form and all the excess silicone and put down some painter's tape uh, so that I could apply some sealer to the concrete before I started with 
the uh, water locks finish that I was going to use on the wood. And for the sealer, I, I just used some DuPont high-tech stone finish that I bought quite a while ago uh, for a fairly reasonable price for a gallon of it. And it's lasted me forever. The concrete pour had made some imperfections in the surface, so I needed to go back with one uh, round of sanding, 120 and then up to 240 grit, before applying the sealer. For the sealer, I had heard a lot about water locks, and so I decided to give it a try. I have to say, I was pretty happy with the results. Uh, it is a similar effect to Danish oil, in that you don't get the really thick coat of buildup of plasticky material like you do with polyurethane, but it feels like it gives you quite a bit more protection than Danish oil, which was important for a tape. So this was really a design experiment that was something that had popped into my head and I just wanted to see what it looked like in real life if I actually made it. And if you like this, then of course, be sure to click that button on the right and subscribe to my channel so you can learn about all my videos. I'd love to hear what you thought of this. If you liked it, if you didn't, if you would have done something different, I'd love to know and I'll see you next time.